Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Microbiology with Sumi. If you like my videos, please like, share and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon for the latest updates. Today's topic is on infection and its types. So let's start with it. Let's start with the short introduction. Infection and immunity are very important terms in clinical microbiology. So when you study clinical microbiology, basically you should know what is infection, what is a disease, what is our immunity. So all these terms are very important. So you should know the basics and then only you can properly study about clinical microbiology. So in this topic, we are going to study about infection, but these terms that is infection and immunity are a result of interaction between host and infecting microorganism. So when this infection is formed, this infection and immunity, these two terms, they come when there is an interaction between a host and infecting microorganisms. Host has the immunity or uh, we can say if the immunity of the host lowers down, then only the microorganism can attack on the host and cause a infection. Okay. Basically, on the basis of relationship between microorganism and host body, microorganisms are divided into two ways. So, on the basis of the relation between microorganism and the host body, that is the types of interactions that takes place between a microorganism and a host body, on the basis of that interactions, these microorganisms are divided into two groups. The first group is saprophytes. Saprophytes are the free living microorganisms that survive on dead and decaying organic matter. Okay. Now saprophytes are the microorganisms which live on dead and decaying organic matter. Second is parasites. Parasites are the microbes that can establish themselves in host and are able to grow and multiply in host body. Parasites are of two types and they are pathogens and common cells. Now parasites, what is a parasite? Parasite is a microorganism which can establish themselves or we can say these microorganisms can survive and multiply in a host body. So these microorganisms are able to live in the host body. Now these parasites are of two types. First one is pathogen and second is common cells. Now pathogens. Pathogens are able to produce disease in the host cell. So pathogens are the microorganisms which are able to infect and cause a disease in a host cell. Second is common cells. Common cells are the microorganisms that live peacefully in host without causing any infection or disease. So these basically are uh, common cells are the harmless microorganisms which are present in our body. They live peacefully in our body and they don't cause any kind of infection or disease to our body. So this is common cell. Now the host body has large number of common cells. Many common cell microorganisms act as facultative pathogen. Now see, there are numerous microorganisms that are present inside our body. Now there are some microorganisms in this common cells that can act as a facultative pathogen. Now what is a facultative pathogen? Facultative pathogen are the normal microflora of the host that live in the host without causing any harm to host. But once the immunity of the host weakens, they can cause a disease to host. So facultative pathogens are the pathogens which, normal, which are normally present in our body. But once our immune system lowers down, these pathogens are able to cause a disease or these pathogens are able to infect the host body. So such pathogens are called as facultative pathogens. Now here there are two important terms. So here we are basically studying these two important terms. One is infection and other is infectious disease. So 
here it is important to make a difference between them infection is growth and multiplication of a parasite inside or on the surface of a cell or tissue now what is a infection infection is basically growth and multiplication now when a parasite grows and multiplies inside our body or any tissue that time it is called as infection and in infection parasite invades the cell and infects the cell that is in infection what happens parasite enters the cell and there it causes the infection here basically there are 10 types of infections now let's see them one by one first one is primary infection second is reinfection third one is secondary infection fourth is focal infection fifth is cross infection sixth is nosocomial infection seventh is introgenic infection eighth one is endogenous infection ninth is exogenous infection and tenth one is latent infection so let's see all these terms one by one let's start with the definition of this types of infection the first one is primary infection when the host cell is primarily or initially infected by a parasite it is called as primary infection now when a healthy host cell initially gets infected by a parasite and a infection is occurred that infection is called as primary infection second is reinfection when the host cell gets subsequently infected by a same parasite is called as reinfection so once the host gets infected initially by a parasite then it recovers then after some time again the same host gets infected by the same parasite and again it results in infection when subsequently the host is infected by the parasite same parasite so here it is called as reinfection third is secondary infection the infection in which host cell has low immunity due to pre existing infectious disease and gets infected by a new parasite is called as secondary infection so initially when a healthy host gets primary infection now this uh, patient is suffering from a infection okay already suffering from a infection and result of that infection is it uh, the host has a low immunity now at this stage if the host gets again infected by the second parasite or a new parasite we can say in the presence of pre existing infection is called as secondary infection means here once the host is infected or we can say simply a infected host gets reinfected by the second parasite so such infection is called as secondary infection focal infection focal infection is a condition in which infection occurs at a localized site such as a particular organ or a part of a body but it shows generalized effect on a body now focal infection means suppose any part of your body for example tonsils for example a tonsil is affected but the effect of that will be shown by your entire body or the generalized effects are shown on the body such infections are called as focal infections next one is cross infection it is a infection in which a patient is already suffering from a disease and a new infection is set up and this is called as cross infection now here what happens once the infection is resulted into a disease now a diseased person suppose a person is suffering from pneumonia okay and again that person gets infected by a tuberculosis infection so uh, you might have been listen that a person is suffering from multiple infections such infections are called as cross infection okay now the next one is nosocomial infection the infection which is caused due to hospital is called as nosocomial infection now suppose a healthy person is visiting a hospital for uh, for visiting a patient or generalized check up that time if the healthy host gets infected at the hospital is called as nosocomial infection 
Next one is introgenic infection. The infection which is physically induced resulting from investigation, therapy or other conditions is called as introgenic infection. So, if a person uh, is not feeling well, for example, if a person is uh, suffering from cold or fever, we can say, that time that person goes for generalized checkup. For example, it goes for the, and that person can go for a blood test. Now, during this procedures, if the person gets infected by this investigation procedures, that infection is called as introgenic infection. Or if a therapy is going on, any kind of therapy is going on, that time the if the patient gets infected is called as introgenic infection. Endogenous infection. It is an infection that is caused due to presence of an infectious agent that is already present in the body but previously was asymptomatic is called as endogenous infection. Okay. Now, the infection in which the parasite is already present in the body but it doesn't show any kind of symptoms. Okay. But once it gets the chance, it can cause a infectious disease. Such infection is called as endogenous infection. Next is exogenous infection. It is an infection in which the bacteria is present in a closed system of our body. But it enters in sterile area such as brain, muscles and result in a disease. So, in exogenous infection, the bacteria is present inside our body. Okay. Now, uh, see the bacteria or the parasites is present in our body in many areas. But there are some organs we can say the organs of our body are completely sterile there there is no bacteria okay no microorganisms are present there now in such cases in some cases what happens this microorganisms which are present in the closed system of our body they enters in a sterile organ such as brain for example meningitis okay and such a disease is called as exogenous infection Latent infection. It is an infection in which some parasites which can result in infection resides in a tissue in a latent or hidden form and produces a clinical disease which when a host resistance is lowered and such infection is called as latent infection. Okay. Now, latent infection is an infection in which some parasites which are able to cause a disease, a harmful disease, a clinical disease. Okay. Now, such microorganism or such parasites, they are present in the hidden form in our body that they don't show any kind of symptom. They just simply grow and multiply in our body. But once the host resistance power is lowered, that is the immunity gets lowered, such pathogens result in infection okay, and can cause a clinical disease. Such infection is called as latent infection. Now, this was all about infection and its types. If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching.